we have a lot of new people. So I thought I would show you guys, I talk about Kevin's Chop Chop Salad a lot, and I get a lot of questions on what is that and how does he make it. So basically, all it is, there's no lettuce in it. It's peeled English cucumbers. So if you don't know, the English cucumbers are the ones that don't have seeds. I don't know if those are seeds or not, but that they say they don't have seeds. So they're supposed to be easier on digestion and they do taste a little different. So we always do those. They also keep better, by the way, for meal prep. Then cherry tomatoes. A lot of times he'll do tri-colored peppers, but it looks like we have orange. Oh, we have orange and yellow in his salad. So usually he does tri-colored peppers and then all of those things go in his bowl. And then he adds a couple tablespoons of Ken's light Thousand Island dressing. And then just some crushed black pepper, and that is the Chop Chop salad. We usually have foil packed chicken for dinner, but today we're probably gonna have it for lunch. So it's a weekend, so we're gonna switch it up a little bit. I still get a lot of questions on how I do my foil packed chicken because it always comes out really tender. It's never dry, it's just perfect every time. So all I do is I cut up the chicken, I butterfly it and then I cut it up in chunks and I marinate it for at least 24 hours. It's usually more like three days and I just use some olive oil spray and then whatever seasoning I want. I do a lot of them at once like we usually have three freezer bags of them and we just pull them out through the week so on this one I have New Orleans Cajun seasoning that's Kevin's favorite and it's pretty heavily seasoned and then all you do is you line the bottom of your casserole pan with tin foil and just fold it over I'm gonna try to do this with one hand let me do this and I'll show you guys what it looks like Okay, so the chicken is done, and I will show you how it looks. See, it looks like that every single time. There's, n I didn't put any liquid in that at all. That's just kind of what it does when you steam it in the foil pack. It's perfect every single time. I'm working on my famous spoon roast. I've shown this to you guys before. The reason that we call it a spoon roast is because by the time this is done cooking, my fan just kicked on, so hopefully you can still hear me. By the time this is done cooking, this will be so tender, you can cut it with a spoon. So the key to making that happen I marinate this overnight and I will have the full recipe in the description box and linked on my blog, but other than the marinade, the big thing is the way you cook it. You have to sear the meat. I'm going to finish this in the oven. Well, this is going to cook most of the time in the oven, but if you sear the meat, you break down the muscle fibers which I know is kind of, this is a big roast, you guys can kind of see that. You break down the muscle fibers and that is what makes the meat tender. I've got some olive oil in the bottom of this skillet. You can see those onions are starting to caramelize. I have about two tablespoons of garlic in here as well. So this is ready to go ahead and go in the oven. I have the oven preheated to 275. This, I'm gonna put the lid on. I'm gonna put about, oh, I don't know, maybe a cup of water to fill the bottom. I'm gonna put a lid on and then I'm gonna let this cook for probably one this big. This is probably gonna go 
in the ballpark of five hours. Took the spoon roast out of the oven. This pot is so heavy. So it's been in about, it's been about two hours right now. And you'll notice I put some carrots in. So I'm just kind of throwing the broth right over the top to keep it kind of the same thing you would do with a turkey, just baste in it a little bit. And we definitely have enough water in there. And now I'm gonna put it back in for probably another two hours.